Hafiz Abdurrahman. I'm a lecturer at a public university in Kenya. I deliver lectures in computing and informatics. In our last lesson, we talked about comments. And basically, we talked that there are two types of comments. The block comment or the multiple line comment and the line comment or a single line comment. And today, we are going to talk about variables and we are going to answer a question, what are variables? And to take us into that particular journey, we are going to discuss three items. What is the definition of a variable? What is a syntax or the declaration of a variable? And also, we are going to finish up what are the naming conventions of that. So let's start uh, to answer ourselves uh, the first question, which is, what are variables? So basically, when we're talking about uh, what are variables, so we can comfortably say that a variable is a named memory location. So a variable is the name memory location. Also, we can further and try to understand what are these three words are actually telling us. They are telling us that memory, it is used to store information. Uh, so it is used to do what? Used to store information. And that particular information, it is stored into memory to do what? Basically, it is used for processing. So it is processed by the CPU. So let's see how we can analogize and see what happens. Let's take, for example, this is a memory location. And in that particular memory location, we have some addresses. So here we have a memory location, and in this particular memory location, so this is a memory location. And to it, we have got some addresses. And these addresses is whereby we'll find up our stored information. Let's take, for example, randomly, that here we can store some information or value of 1 at 28. Here we can store a value of 256. And maybe here we can store up a, a value of 512. But the biggest problem we're having if we want to access this information. Since it is stored randomly, it is actually impossible to store it. Let's take for example, I want to store up uh, maybe uh, a value of 10. It would be very easy to store a value of 10, but if I want to get this value of 10 and display it, it becomes uh, impossible. So all these memory addresses have to be set, have to be referenced have to be declared for us to actually access them. Let's take for an example a scenario uh, whereby we have got a football uh, match going on and people have uh, been given a ticket without the seat numbers. What will happen? It will be very, very chaotic. Whereby everyone uh, enters uh, and they rush to sit on a particular uh, area. So, it is actually impossible. So, if you're taking that particular scenario back again, it is very, very important for us to remember that uh, we have to have set the address of that particular, uh, uh, that particular uh, variable in order for us to access it. So, let's take uh, this particular example further. If now I have if I've got up a variable called A 
and I've in that particular variable I've stored a value of 10. So if this is a and I've stored up a value of 10, then what happen it is now I have actually set it up. So if I want to I want to say print a basically this particular a it will go to this particular address and actually the output it will display 10. So basically uh, this is what you call uh, uh, the definition of a variable. In basic we are saying a variable it is a named. So this is a named memory location whereby we are talking about A actually uh, giving up a value of 10. Let's go now to the second question of ours. We are ask ourselves uh, what is the syntax or the declaration of uh, uh, a variable. So our declaration or our syntax will take on to uh, this type will be data type and then here we'll have up an identifier. So what is a data type? Data type basically we are going to discuss them into details in our next uh, lesson but uh, basically a data type uh, it is a type or a kind of information which is supposed to be uh, stored into memory because we have different type of information. We have uh, numbers, we have uh, letters, so it's a type of information which is going to be stored there. So that is what is called a data type. Also, data type also stores the size of that particular information. So basically, uh, if you take for example, an integer usually uh, stores uh, uh, usually stores two bytes, and a double will store around eight bytes. So here we are talking about the information which is stored is of data type integer, which stores two bytes. Uh, and another one which is of data type double stores it up. So that is in a very small way is an, uh, what you call up a data type. So what is an identifier? Basically we had seen up in our previous lesson that an identifier it is nothing but a name which is used uh, to declare variables and functions. So this basically will be the syntax the syntax of a data type i mean a syntax of a variable we have got a data type and then an identifier so let's go to the last question to ask ourselves what are the naming conventions Basically, there are two types of naming convention. That is what you call the camel case. Camel case uh, basically is how do we actually write the names of the identifier. So there are different ways of writing up the names of uh, an identifier, and uh, we have seen in our last lesson that there are rules for us uh, to write up an identifier or to write up a variables, they must be alphanumeric and they should have uh, 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 spaces in between and they should not start up with an underscore. So that is very, very important. Now, uh, here uh, we are talking about naming convention. If we want to take at uh, writing up uh, maybe a variable called basic salary. So a variable called basic salary, it is a uh, uh, two words, I and mean, we're not supposed to have a uh, uh, space in between. So basically, there are so many uh, so many ways of writing it up, but uh, I've chosen up to write up, start up with a capital letter basic, and then the other one capital letter salary.
So basically, this is how uh, a Kemal case goes. Or alternatively, you can use what you call the underscore convention. The underscore convention, basically, instead of, we, we can use both, so uh, Camel convention and underscore, instead of not leaving up a line, we are putting up an underscore salary. So basically, that is how the naming convention uh, goes about. So let's at start and see how we can implement uh, variables in, uh, into our uh, def C++. Basically, this is uh, how. So this is our structure of C hash include. So let's start and see how we can do it. Basically, let's uh, see how we calculate the net salary of a person. So we are starting up by saying int. So basic salary. And let's take for example this particular person is earning ten thousand a month, and then here we have got in text. So the government has to take up some text, and uh, hypothetically somebody is paying up uh, a text of seven hundred. And uh, let's see now what will be our net salary. So here in our net net salary. We are using up uh, the underscore convention, and here we had used up our camel case convention. So this basically it will be what our basic salary minus tax minus tax. So if you want to print. So you say print F. So we having percentage D, and then we are printing up our net salary. So here we have used up the two conventions, and we have seen how variable are declared whereby we have got data type, a variable name, and then we assign up a particular value. So let's execute and see what happens. Yes, we have executed here. We have seen actually our uh, net salary. It is uh, 9,300, whereby the 700 has been deducted for taxes. So this comes up to the end of our uh, lesson. And uh, uh, I would urge you to subscribe into our channel for future, uh, for future lessons. And in our next lessons, we are going to talk about uh, actually data types into details. Thank you.